Greetings friends, David Marks here. In this video, I'm going to cover a bunch of keyboard shortcuts that I find helpful when working inside of the develop module in Lightroom Classic. I'm calling this one an intermediate grade tutorial, not because anything that I'm going to do today is very hard, but because I'm going to assume throughout this video that you already understand how all of Lightroom's develop module tools work. If features like the crop tool or the dust spot removal tool are new for you, then I suggest that you watch my in-depth tutorials on each of these specific features before you get too caught up in these bonus keyboard shortcut tricks. Let's hop right into my Lightroom Classic catalog and let's get started. As I'm sure you know, keyboard shortcuts are a great way to speed things up when you're working inside of Lightroom. Some keyboard shortcuts, like pressing the letter D to switch over to Lightroom's develop module, are easy and obvious, but many other useful tricks are not nearly as intuitive. Hiding the panels that run along the sides of the screens here can create more real estate for our images. Throughout many of my videos, I talk about using the tab key on my keyboard to quickly hide the right and left panels. I bet that you also know by now that holding down the shift key with one finger and then pressing the tab key once or twice will hide away almost the entire interface. This trick is great when you want lots of real estate for your image, but to actually get things done in Lightroom's develop module, we almost always need to open up the right-hand panel. I could, of course, click on this little sideways triangle right here to open this panel back up. I could go Tab or Shift-Tab again and then close down all the other panels that I don't need. But a much easier way to open up just the panel that I want is to tap on the F8 key up at the very top of my keyboard. In fact, if you mouse over the window command at the top of the screen and then panels, you'll see that there are F keys that can open up the right, the left, the module picker, or the film strip. Mac folks, you might also have to hold down the FN key for this trick to work for you. If holding the FN key with one finger and then tapping on, say, F8 to open or close the right-hand panel bothers you, then you can go to System Preferences on a Mac and then into Keyboards and enable this switch. With things set this way, your F keys will work just like they would on a PC. Anyway, these F5 through F8 keys make it much faster for me to open up only the panels that I want when I'm working away in here. Well, now that I have the right-hand panel open, let's talk for a few minutes about the clipping indicators. There are two ways that Lightroom Classic can warn you about pixels that are about to be rendered as pure blacks or pure whites. One way to see what's going to be clipped is to hold down the Alt key on a PC, that's Alt Option on a Mac, while you click and drag on one of these basic panel sliders. If I click and drag on the black slider, for example, with the Alt key held down, then the screen will go all white. As I drag the slider down, I'm making my darkest pixels darker, and eventually I'll reach a point where those dots become inky black. Likewise, if I hold down the Alt key and I drag on the white slider, I get the same indication. Only this time, Lightroom uses a black mask and shows white dots as things begin to become blown out. Now, I use this alt-click trick all the time when I'm moving these sliders with precision, but there is another way to show the clipping here. You can lock on Lightroom's clipping indicators by clicking on one of these little squares in the top left or right of the histogram. I urge you not to do this. It's not that I don't like what the squares do, but there's a much better method. Rather than locking these on with a mouse click, I urge you to learn a super useful keyboard shortcut. The keyboard way to enable or disable these clipping indicators is the letter J. Do need to add a quick warning here. One thing that makes learning Lightroom Classic super frustrating is that some keyboard shortcuts are module specific. Pressing J here in the develop module does one thing, but in the library module, this same keyboard shortcut will do something totally different. Anyway, there's little difference between using the clipping indicators or the alt click trick when you're working with these exposure sliders in the basic panel. If we jump around a little, then this keyboard shortcut becomes more useful. When I open up the graduated filter, this keyboard shortcut becomes more important because the alt click only works on this slider. The thing is that when you're working with these powerful tools, we often need to see when we might be pushing things too far. When I press J, those clipping indicators become live again. And now if I drag a graduated filter out over this image, and then I take one of these sliders, I'll be able to see when I've moved it too far. While I have the graduated filter open, let me show you another favorite keyboard shortcut. 
I'm sure this trick is going to be old news for a lot of you, but it still makes its way into all of my videos on things that will frustrate you endlessly in Lightroom. If you don't know which key to hold down, when you go to drag out a graduated filter, things often get tilted. In some of my videos, I jokingly call this the drunken aviator move. When you're working with a scene like this, then we generally want a graduated filter that's nice and straight too. But by default, that's not what we usually get when we just start dragging across the screen. The key to keeping the graduated filter perfectly level is to hold down the shift key before you start to click and drag. If you keep the shift key held down the whole time that you're dragging, then the graduated filter cannot rotate around to some wacky angle. I should add here that this is true no matter which direction you start to drag. If you drag from left to right, for example, with the shift key held down, then you'll get a graduated filter that is restricted to straight up and down across your image. Something similar happens if I switch over to the radial filter. If I just click and drag with the radial filter active, then I can freehand any sort of elliptical shape that I want. Sometimes this is fine, but if you want a perfect circle, then the secret is to hold down the shift key the entire time that you're dragging out your filter. One more thing, call it a bonus trick that I find helpful with the radial filter. Ordinarily, when you drag any of these four handles, the whole oval changes. But if you hold the Alt key, that's Alt option again on a Mac, while you're dragging, then you can adjust each of these control points one by one until you get just the right shaped oval. Okay, I think that's enough tricks with the local adjustment tools. Let's turn to two other tools where I think that knowing some keyboard shortcuts are equally important. First, let's switch over to Lightroom Classic's Spot Removal Tool. Now, I have two in-depth videos on the Spot Removal Tool elsewhere in my video library. The hard part here, though, is not the actual dust spot removal process. Zapping dust is easy. What's less obvious is the correct way to search through your image and to find all of your dust spots. The key to finding every dust spot is to zoom in to 100%. Next, make sure that the spot removal tool is active and then look down here on the toolbar. One of the greatest features in Lightroom Classic has got to be this visualize spots option, quick tangent. If I had to guess, I bet that about a third of the people watching this tutorial have accidentally hidden their toolbar away. If you are one of those people, then please press the letter T on your keyboard right now to bring this crucial part of the user interface back. Anyway, when I click on the Visualize Spots overlay, my screen will go black and white. Next, I can adjust the threshold of this overlay using this slider down here. I'm sure that many of you know this all too well, but do you see this little donut shape right here? This little white circle is the telltale sign of a dust spot, and this is where the Visualize Spots overlay is so helpful. As you can probably tell by now, I love the Visualize Spots mask, but it's not perfect. There are times when we want to toggle this feature on and off to see both the actual image and its Spots mask. Having to bring the cursor down here to click on this switch and then bring the cursor back again and again gets tedious, hence the need for a keyboard shortcut. To turn the overlay off and on, press the letter A on your keyboard. So now, Let's talk about how to make sure that you've searched every single inch of your image for dust and boogers. What I see again and again in my workshops are people using the hand tool to drag aimlessly around their photo as they pretend to search for dust. If you're one of those people, stop and check this out instead. Hidden inside of Lightroom Classic is a way to search every square inch of your image. The secret here is the page up and page down keys on your keyboard. If you start at the top left corner of your image and press page down, then Lightroom will automatically drop you down exactly one row. Using the page down key on your keyboard, you can move perfectly row by row until you reach the end of this column. Watch the navigator window when I hit page down again. When I get to the end of my first column, the next page down keystroke automatically moves me over and up to the top of the next column, and so on and so on, and so on. Using this trick, you can search from the top left to the bottom right corner without ever having to zoom out. While I'm demoing this, I can hear the voices of all the Mac users out there screaming in frustration because there is no page up or down key 
on most Apple keyboards. Don't panic, Mac folks. The secret on a Mac is to hold down the FN button at the far bottom left edge of your keyboard with one finger. Now, press the up or down arrow keys on the far right side of the Mac keyboard with another finger. On a Mac, FN plus the down arrow equals page down, and FN plus the up arrow equals page up. But the thing is that these keyboard secrets are meant to be used together. So, for maximum efficiency, when it's time to work with the spot removal tool, start by zooming in to one-to-one and go to the top left corner of your image. Now, tap the letter A on and off. If you'd like, hide the panels away. Find your dust spots, zap your dust spots. When you're sure that this zone is clean, use that page down command to move methodically from the top of the image down to the far, far end, being sure that you zap every dust spot and if you do this, hopping in and out of dusk mass mode and searching all the way from top to bottom, you'll know that you've looked everywhere for those nasty dust spots. Using these tricks, your image will be clean in no time. For my final set of tips, let's switch over to Lightroom Classic's Crop Tool. The first keyboard trick that I have for you is something that I've covered in some of my other recent tutorials. When the Crop Tool is active, and when you want to switch its orientation around, then the letter X on the keyboard is for you. Pressing the X key is the best way to flip the cropping frame to make a vertical image out of a horizontal or vice versa. Now, X switches the orientation of the crop frame. But I have to warn you that this is another one of those places where a keyboard shortcut serves multiple purposes inside of this program. Pressing X with the crop tool closed means that I've accidentally marked this file with the reject flag. If this happens and you notice it, then that's no big deal. But I have to warn you that if you make this mistake, and if you don't catch it, you could easily mark this image for deletion. Anyway, hopefully the use of the X key is old news for you. The other trick that I have to finish things up today is to activate the crop tool again, and then to press the letter O on your keyboard. Pressing the O key repeatedly here cycles through the different crop guide overlays. Now, if you have listened to one of my composition lectures over the years, then you know that I'm a big fan of the rule of thirds or of placing my subject under a PowerPoint. By cycling through these different overlays, I sometimes find that cropping with a different design idea, something like the golden spiral, might be a better choice. If you find that some of these overlays include suggestions for things that you're never going to use, like this grid, then you can go up to the word tools down to the crop guide overlay option and down to the one that says choose overlays to cycle. In here, for example, I'm going to turn off the grid, center, and aspect ratio since these are formulas that rarely speak to me. One final tip, and for this one, I think it helps to bring up something like the golden spiral overlay. If you're using an overlay like this, but the image's orientation doesn't match up with the overlay, then you can hold down the shift key and tap on the letter O again. Using this trick, we can pivot the overlay around until its orientation makes sense with this image. And now I can adjust the cropping frame to place my subject right under the strongest part of this design formula. Perfect. This use of the golden spiral idea looks great to me. And hopefully this overlay thing was the icing on the cake for a whole bunch of new tricks for you today. I hope that you found this video helpful. If you learned something today, then please hit the subscribe button and leave us a like or a comment down below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in our next tutorial.